It's time for the Rod of Dynasty Podcast. Let's go! Rider Dynasty Podcast with Ryan Bickerstaff, JJ Wenner, and your host, Michael Kloss. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Come on, boys. It's podcast time. Now, while we might not be as awesome as Cool Runnings, right? I mean, and really, who is? Um, we are still pretty cool and so excited to be here. A little bit of a throwback there, but I just had to get it out of my system. Um, we are, and welcome to the Rider Dynasty podcast. What an awesome show we have planned for you. We are mock drafting today. And of course, as always, I'm joined by two great friends of mine, the IDP champion of the world. That's JJ Winter. How's it going today? Hello, hello. Everything's going great over here in Pennsylvania. And then, as I like to call the newly crowned Devi King of the World, maybe that's a little bit uh, uh, too much for you, Ryan, you know, but you've been busting out lots of research on Devi. Still long, long ways to go, but you've just been killing it. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going great. And actually, it's quite fitting. Uh, the name Ryan in biblical terms means king. You know, I of course I researched that beforehand. That's exactly <laughs> why, exactly why I said that. Um, I, like I said, um, we are the Rider Dynasty podcast. You can catch us on Twitter at Rider Dynasty or at our website RiderDynasty.com. Uh, as I mentioned today, we have some fun. We're going to run through a mock draft. Uh, it's pretty simple rules, and we're basing it off a 12-team half PPR mock. Uh, there's going to be eight rounds, and we'll be drafting one quarterback two running backs, two wide receivers, uh, one tight end, and then two regular flex players with running back, wide receiver, tight end eligibility. But before we start the mock draft, we'd love to cover some news around the NFL this week. Melvin Gordon and Zeke Elliott both are threatening to hold out of training camp. Gordon says he'll sit out the season if he doesn't get a new deal, and Zeke could be heading that way, but he claims only to stop at training camp. Ryan, what are you doing with Zeke and Gordon this year? I don't have shares of either player, so it's hard for me to give advice, but I'd hold Elliott for now and trade Gordon away. I passed on Gordon not twice, but thrice for Andrew Luck, Joe Mixon, and Carrion Johnson in our Rider Dynasty Fantasy League recently. Uh, when it comes to Gordon's contract dispute, I, I suspect the Chargers may be asking themselves if they pay him how many more years uh, as a top 10 running back does Gordon have left. And I have the same question. He's a good running back, but he's been used a lot. He's also had some injuries and taken a lot of hits. All that stuff takes a toll eventually. So I'm saying get what you can for him while his fantasy value is still where it is. Michael? Now... I, we like to make fun of each other a lot, right? Um, I, we just kind of give each other a little bit of the business. But, of course, you're going to hold Zeke Elliott. Like, what else? You're not going to trade Zeke Elliott. Like, even if there's something looming, I think I would still hold Zeke Elliott if he had a eight-game suspension this year. You know? Uh, you're just sitting and waiting to see what goes on. I think that there's the issue that the NFL got a chance to look into his case and did not suspend him. And just because... Uh, a, a bouncer's pressing charges. I don't think still anything's going to come unless all of a sudden video surfaces of, of him pushing the bouncer around, turning around and then slapping a woman. Right. And of course I don't think that happened. So uh, in order to be facetious here, I think we're okay with Gordon. That does scare me a little bit. Um, I'm a little worried about, just, uh, again, his usage over the last couple of years, he's been uh, a monster on the field. But that might be one that if he jumps into a different situation, like maybe Tampa Bay, um, then I'm not really worried about usage there. And he's a valuable fantasy asset to me at that point. So I wouldn't mind floating an offer 
uh, for Melvin Gordon to all the other Melvin Gordon owners, since I'm not an owner of him um, at this time of year, just to see if anyone's getting skittish whatsoever. Those are two solid answers. I believe each of you get a half point. So congratulations. All right. Well, then let's uh, let's keep it moving with the news and a little bit of news out of Tennessee. Um, Jim White of the Titans official website reports that new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith says he intends to, quote, ride contract year running back Derrick Henry this season. It's very interesting to see, especially in training camps and the start of training camps, that the hype is getting unreal. Henry had an excellent end to the season jj are you jumping on that hype train or are you staying on solid ground all right two things one (laughs) whenever you say all right i'm like i'm like dialed in i'm so excited (laughs) i'm 44 years old i don't jump at all anymore (laughs) all right so if i was getting on the hype train i would step onto it gingerly however number two as you guys both know, I'm not getting on any Derrick Henry train until I see that it starts before the last three weeks of the season. I'm not a big fan of his. I'm sure they're going to ride him. But I'm not a fan of any Titans player this year. So, sorry, not a guys. One. Not, not a one. one. Okay. No, Ryan, what do you think? Uh, I'm kind of opposed to you here a little bit. I'm all in on Henry this year. The Titans finally figured out the best way to deploy Henry late in the season last year, so that should carry over to 2019. In other words, Henry isn't going to need nine duds in a row before he gets warmed up this season. The situation is perfect for a breakout year. Marcus Mariota, he can't carry that team. Uh, So Henry having a big year is the only way the Titans even sniff the playoffs this year. So Tennessee is going to scheme and feed Henry the ball, riding him to what they hope will be a lot of wins. Plus, he's going to get paid. He's playing to get paid, I mean. So, he's going to run hard. He doesn't have the same clout as a guy like Le'Veon Bell or even Melvin Gordon to sit to sit out or threaten to sit out. So, I'm predicting a really big year for Derrick Henry. All in. Yeah, ter- turning uh, 25 in January, like we talked about that monster finish of 625 yards and eight touchdowns on 97 carries in December. So, uh, can be... Very, very interesting. Again, a half point, I would say, awarded for great points um, to both of you. All right, so uh, we're going to move it along then. Adrian Peterson is just gushing about Redskins quarterback Case Keenum. Michael, we're not buying this, are we? No, of course not. Uh, I think that's what Adrian Peterson has to say. Um, Adrian Peterson, to me, needs to stay in the news, right? He needs to hear his name. I'm not. I'm not saying that you know he's full of himself whatsoever. Um, sorry, Adrian, don't come for me here. But in camp, he's excited. He's seeing a spot with uh, you know guys having still some uh, going through injury. Uh, a, right now, he's slated to start the season as the Redskins lead tailback. Um, I think those are the things that you're supposed to say, and especially with Case Keenum's. Uh, subpar year last year with the Broncos, that is a confidence boost that you can get from a future Hall of Famer. So, no, I'm not buying it. Adrian Peterson is doing exactly what he's supposed to do as a good teammate here. I am getting more and more down on Darius Geis as the offseason continues. Yeah, I agree. Uh, one of my buddies is an athletic trainer, and we were texting today and he just kept talking about how how much he doesn't like the fact that he has a hamstring injury following uh, an ACL tear and isn't surgery. That, isn't that what happened with Dalvin Cook last year too? Exactly. And what happens is it's compensatory injury because the ACL helps stabilize. And in, when you don't have an ACL, your hamstring kind of takes over. It's not a good thing. I, I'm not a physical therapist, so I can't quite explain it the way he did. Thanks, Nick, by the way. But I don't know, man. I'm almost buying in on Adrian Peterson, but Case Keenum? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I, I can't do Case Keenum. Sorry. Yeah, neither can I. Listeners of the show know how I feel about Dwayne Haskins. Keenum doesn't have Lon's the starter, if any time, in Washington. So our last bit of 
news is a little bit interesting in Denver. According to the Denver Post, Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman look to be in more of a 50-50 timeshare. Uh oh, Ryan. What do you expect from these two backs going forward? I talked in the recent podcast about how Freeman is going to see his role increase in year two. Uh, Broncos ball carriers ran the ball 393 times in 2018. So, assuming a 50 50 split this year, I have both Lindsey and Freeman getting around 175 totes. Uh, projecting, uh, so that's projecting Freeman to around 825 total yards and Lindsey to around 950 total yards. So I'm looking at both as flex options with running back two upside, especially in the case of an injury. Uh, I can see Freeman getting more goal line opportunities though. So I'm thinking he's going to have more touchdowns. Uh, I checked earlier, Philip Lindsay's ADP is around 43rd, and Freeman is somewhere around 90. So there's a, and there's a very real chance that Freeman actually outperforms Philip Lindsay from a fantasy perspective. So I'm advising completely stay away from Lindsay, let somebody else take him, and wait till, you know, wait a few more rounds later to pick up Royce Freeman. It's a better value. Michael? Uh, I'm, I think I'm right there with you. Uh, it's, it's tough. I think that there will be fantasy points to have if you take Philip Lindsay, but there's this nervousness with me and Lindsay just because I don't know if he was a flash in the pan. I mean, he's definitely talented, but going forward, is he a, is he a dynasty asset with a player like Royce Freeman? I know that the knock on Freeman uh, you know, coming into draft season last year was that there was a little bit of the tread on the tires uh, when he was playing at Oregon. But I might stay away from both these backs, but definitely take the value for me of Freeman. I don't, I still don't think that Lindsay proved it to me as a dynasty asset going forward. I definitely would uh, take a, sh- a flyer on Freeman in the later rounds, then jump on Lindsay when I could maybe have a player like. Marlon Mack or maybe Josh Jacobs uh, instead. So I'm going to pass on Lindsey and look for Freeman late uh, and maybe pass on Freeman too at that point. Uh, So unless we have any other news that's coming, that's going to just do it for a little brief jaunt at our news desk. So guys, the time has come. Let's get into our mock draft. Right, before we begin, as a reminder, there are going to be eight rounds, and we'll be drafting one quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, one tight end, and two regular flex players, meaning a running back, wide receiver, or tight end. Uh, we are drafting against the computer with Dynasty League settings on Sleeper. All right, so we're going to talk our way through this draft. We're going to let you know what we're thinking at each point as we draft and build our teams. Then we'll share our final teams on Twitter, and we'll let you all vote on who drafted the best team. Just look for at JJ Winner. <laughs> you know, there. Like, what's going to happen is you're just going to like absolutely blow us away with this draft, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. So this 12-team mock... <laughs> I would. Okay. It's ready to begin. Ryan, you've got the fourth spot, yes. right? JJ, you're taking the seventh. Okay. And I've got the turn at 12. So, Ryan, you are up first in the mock. It has started. If you want to talk us through your position, you've got a minute and a half, my friend. All right. Uh, so, I'm on the clock here at pick four uh and Saquon Barkley Christian McCaffrey and Ezekiel Elliott have already gone uh which is fine by me because Alvin Kamara is my personal favorite running back this year I think he has a very real chance to finish as the RB1 and getting him at pick four is uh it's good value so I'm gonna lock in Alvin Kamara at pick 1.4 All right, that's a solid pick. My general philosophy with a startup draft is to win the first year, try to make some money. I usually look for slightly older players, which gives me a little bit of flexibility then in the later rounds to pick up some rookies. So after Alvin Kamara went, DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham went off the board. 
So I am looking clearly at, hmm, Devontae Adams from Green Bay. Put it on the board. So as JJ gets ready to lock in Devontae Adams, that's going to put me at the, like I said, the turn um, in front of Devontae Adams at 1-8 was Michael Thomas, Melvin Gordon at 1-9, Mike Evans, Juju Smith-Schuster. That one's tough. I, I wanted to see if I could snag Juju, but he's not been falling to the turn here. Um, I'm a little uh, gun-shy about Joe Mixon as his offensive linemen seem to keep dropping like flies. Um, I think on the turn, uh, the obvious picks for me are a – Solid young running back in Nick Chubb, so I'm going to lock Nick Chubb in there. Uh, I'm not worried about uh, Kareem Hunt too much. And then Julio Jones is someone that I have everywhere. <laughs> it's a mock draft. I like to have fun. I like to uh, diversify my assets, but Julio Jones is just too good to pass up at this time. I still think that he's got three years of elite uh, talent and being an elite wide receiver. And as JJ said, you plan for three years out. Uh, and no more. So Julio Jones is an easy pick uh, for me at the 201. So coming back to you, JJ. All right. Uh, good picks at the turn. Once you went with Julio Jones, Joe Mixon, Todd Gurley, David Johnson, and Stefan Diggs all came off the board. So, oof. What are you thinking? Talk it through. You know, you're you're absolutely right. So what I'm thinking is, should I go with another wide receiver? I tend to like to wait on running back. So I think I'm going to go ahead and draft James Conner. All right. All right, Ryan, coming to you. So uh, after uh, James Conner went, we just saw Antonio Brown and Dalvin Cook go off the board. And uh, so I'm going to go with a receiver here. And Keenan Allen is just sitting there for the taking and he's one of my favorite running backs in the NFL. He's just, he's so reliable. And, uh, so I'm going to lock him in at the 2.9. Uh, do you see any surprises so far as, as it comes and and comes back to you here? I'm surprised the, the AI sniped carry on Johnson, uh, (laughs) at 3.2, uh, uh, they knew. Yeah, they they knew. Uh, it's uh it's a conspiracy. Uh, anyway, um, Le'Veon Bell, Amari Cooper, Adam Thielen, George Kittle, and Travis Kelsey were the other players that were selected, which kind of leaves me in a world of meh right now, especially from a dynasty standpoint. We have uh, Kenny Galladay, who I'm not that high on, uh, as the you know, 28.9th ADP, Brandon Cooks, AJ Green's aging. Uh, what do I want to do here? Um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to deviate from my normal, uh, from my normal strategy. Oh, he, he's going to, he's going to do it, JJ. And I think. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, okay. Uh, just lock him at, in at 3.4. I wasn't expecting that, so I'm a, I, I thought I was about to be sniped. Uh, after Mahomes went off the board, DJ Moore and Aaron Jones followed suit. I'm now on the clock at 3-7. I'm looking at a team that has a great wide receiver one. Um, I have a very good running back. And the top two tight ends have already gone off the board. Well, if there's one thing I know is that there's three good tight ends in this league who are going to dominate the ratings. I would normally wait to get a tight end, but like Michael said, I'm going to do something a little bit different here, and I want to see how my team turns out. So I am going to go with Zach Ertz. No! Put it on the board. I thought I was tailor-made coming up to grab him. (laughs) (laughs) Hulk man. (laughs) Gosh, so Z- so JJ takes Zach Ertz probably wouldn't have lasted to me. Uh, four more picks. Robert Woods goes in the third round. Kenny Galladay at the three nine. Brandon Cooks. Wow, Robert Woods before Brandon Cooks. That uh, that's surprising to me. And then of course AJ Green goes 
at uh, 311 because he's kind of where I was looking. So I've got a choice here. Again, I am uh, at the turn, so I don't feel like taking a tight end here. I don't think that that's the right move. Um, I'm not ready for a quarterback. Um, though Luck or Mayfield is an interesting proposition. Um, gosh, maybe Luck might be too much to pass up. Um, but I definitely know that in my wide receivers, they I feel like they hold a little bit more value as the years go by, but I'm just not loving anybody else like in, in quarterback that I that would feel like I need to take now that I can't get later. I've got 15 seconds to pick, so I'm going to go with T.Y. Hilton, a little bit of an old wide receiver core, and then I'm going to follow that up with a running back, and I'm going to look like I'm going to have young running backs and old wide receivers. Hopefully that I can mitigate that a little bit later with some younger wide receivers down the line and some flex play. So Josh Jacobs, come to Papa. All right. So after that, who do we have going off the board? Sony Michelle and Leonard Fournette follow Josh Jacobs. Then we had Chris Godwin and Cooper Cup go off the board. Wow. I am looking at my options and not liking what I see. So if I had an option, I might actually trade out of this pick and hope let somebody come up and take who they wanted, maybe get an extra pick in the seventh or, you know, an extra startup pick. But I don't have that option. So I am looking. Are the bots not returning your uh, instant messages? They are not. Um, your DMs? Well, one of them just keeps saying mean things to me, so I'm going <laughs> to ignore them. I'm not a fan of Calvin Ridley. Uh, I'm not a fan of Marlon Mack. Corey Davis, don't make me laugh. Well, you know what? I broke the streak. I I got completely off my normal plan, and I took Zach Ertz early. So why not take a QB early? And I'm going to take the man. Andrew Luck, put it on the pick. board. That's a, That's a good pick. Yeah, in, in our in our mock draft, um, again, there are certain things that that you would probably do um, in this interest of fun and, and walking through this and seeing different ADPs. It's not a bad pick there. No, not at all. And uh, after Andrew Luck, we saw another quarterback, Deshaun Watson, go, and then Corey Davis. Uh, so now at four point nine. I kind of like the situation I'm in because I like Marlon Mack and Calvin Ridley a lot. So I, you know, this is a coin flip. I'm going to go ahead and take Calvin Ridley. I'm going to lock that in at 4.9. I'm expecting a thousand yard season out of him this year. And then, uh, oh. yeah, we saw Jarvis Landry, Marlon Mack, Darius Geis, Baker Mayfield, Mike Williams and Derrick Henry. So uh, I was I was sniped by the AI again. Uh, this is great. Um, <laughs> Dang you, bot number three! <laughs> he's, yeah, he's becoming a thorn in my side a little bit here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, let's let's go, uh, David Montgomery. Why not? As your as your RB two, as my RB two, I I don't love it, but I don't know who else I would pick up. Phil Lindsay, Damian Williams, don't make me laugh. Rashad Penny. Oh, ooh, shots fired. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what the heck did I ever do to you, Ryan? <laughs> yeah, that's not that's more, not cool, more Ryan. More importantly, what the heck did you did Damian Williams ever do to you? Oh, Nothing. not score you points on the team that you didn't have him in. Hey, no offense, Michael. You're talking through my uh, my minute thirty. So, uh, Keneal Harry went off the board. It's I not like Keneal. Seconds of it too. <laughs> I know you did. Uh, so, and Keel Harry and Devonta Freeman went off the board. I don't know if we have any music. We might not have time for music. But um, come to me, Sammy. You know I love you. I've always loved you, <laughs> and I always, always will. I'm taking Sammy Watkins as my wide receiver too. 
God, I'm crazy in love. <laughs> and, and yet you still have 20 seconds extra. So if, do you need an extra 30? Do you want to take it up now to talk about string theory or <laughs> anything at this point? You, you know what? I actually, seconds. I actually need a minute alone after I drafted Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank goodness Alan Robinson went by the bot because I was not touching him. Which, by the way, the person after you, JJ, the bot, has got five wide receivers. Um, I'm heartbroken over Damian Williams because that's who I wanted. Thank God Philip Lindsay got taken and Tyler Boyd um, at the five eleven. Um, I think this is the spot. Um, that it just makes sense for me. Since I'm I'm back to back, I'm making two picks here. Um, I would love to have uh, Aaron Rodgers. So putting Aaron Rodgers on the board to have him hopefully um, with his new head coach that uh, can't stay healthy here. Um, and then now I'm going best player available. Right. Um, I'm not loving any running backs really at this spot. I think this would definitely be a trade candidate um, with Penny, Cohen, Miles Sanders, um, Tevin Coleman, or Mark Ingram really in the next uh, kind of tier. So I'm going to go a little crazy at this point, um, but this is how I would draft in this mock draft. I, I kind of like uh, O.J. Howard here at this point. Uh, I think that he could be... You know, in your top four, top five, I haven't loved him too much in the past, but uh, he seems exciting right now. So, O.J. Howard, you are mine. That's a great pick. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so after O.J. went off the board, we have Tyler Lockett, Evan Ingram, Tariq the Freak, Cohen, and Miles Sanders all going off the board. I'm looking at my team right now. I have two wide receivers, one running back, a tight end, and a QB. All taken. So I actually can just take who, whomever I want at this point. So I'm going to look at the wide receivers because I think there's still a ton of talent at that position. Uh, so right now, at least through Sleeper, they're showing Cortland Sutton. Tyreek Hill, Will Fuller, Christian Kirk, Alshon Jeffrey as the next batch. Out of that, I'm the highest personally on the Arizona offense. Don't you do this to me. <laughs> so I'm going to take Christian well, yeah. Kirk and I, I mean, have not only my love letter. Yeah, now you have two. But Michael's love letter. I mean, so, I, said, I passed on him at, at that point. I thought I could snag him. Later, it was going to be several picks. It is what it is. If you love someone, <laughs> let, let them, them go. go. And if they don't come back, it's because I just put them on the board. Christian Kirk. TJ Hushman Zula. Championship. Championship. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Go well, for it. If JJ didn't take him, I was actually going to take Christian Kirk next. And uh, Well, just rub it in. <laughs> then. Okay. And uh, the bots... Again, sniped me. I was going to take either Rashad Penny or Tyreek Hill. This is just this draft is working out in my favor exactly the way I wanted it to. It isn't working out that way at all. <laughs> of uh, I'm gonna uh, to prevent myself from somehow being sniped on this one, and I'm gonna scroll down and take Kenyon Drake. At 6.9, I have him as a top 15 running back in PPR this year. So I'm going to lock that in. How about going forward? Going forward, you know, I like him for the next couple years at least. Uh, I He might not, he might be a better redraft prospect than Dynasty, but I'm anticipating a big season out of him this year and perhaps next year too. And you can always sell off a guy if it looks like he's going to take a like a downward turn. Uh, so after I took Drake, we saw A.J. Brown, Will Fuller, Tevin Coleman, Cortland Sutton, Robbie Anderson, and Russell Wilson go off the board. Uh, can I interrupt you real quick? It. Can you run down your team really quickly and then tell us your thought process of who you're looking at? All right. Uh, so my team right now looks like Alvin Kamara. Keenan Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Calvin Ridley, David Montgomery, Kenyon Drake, and it looks like I'm going to add Dante Pettis here. Um, I'm looking for a nice balance of 
I'm trying to go as young as I can, but I'm trying to find the nice balance of guys that are already proven too. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Keenan Allen, uh, maybe Patrick Holmes to a degree. He's sure to have a down year from what he did last year, but he'll still be a top three quarterback almost almost certainly. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for uh, in this is a, a lot of youth and a lot and some proven players. So I'm going to lock in Dante Pettis here at 7.4 and uh, JJ, you're up. All right, after Dante Pettis went off the board, we saw Carson Wentz and David Njoku go off the board, which is fine. I wasn't going to take either of those. So right now, I'm looking at a team with Andrew Luck as my starting QB. James Conner is the only running back I have right now. At wide receiver, I have Devontae Adams, Sammy Watkins, and Christian Kirk. And then at tight end, I have Zach Ertz. So in my last two spots for my roster, I'm probably going to take a wide receiver and a running back. I'm not really sure in what order. So looking at my team right now, I... I'm going to actually take a look at the running backs. And I, over there, I see Mark Ingram, Chris Carson, Royce Freeman, uh, James White, uh, Daryl Henderson. So those are some of the names that are popping out to me right now. I'm probably not going to pick any of those. I think somebody will fall to me in the next round. So jumping over to the wide receivers, I see a couple names that stand out to me. Alshon Jeffrey seems to be falling a little bit past his ADP. However, being that I have Andrew Luck and that I JJ. love stealing people's loves, I'm going to put Paris Campbell on the board. <laughs> JJ. Yes. Just when you think, like, I'm getting heated. <laughs> so am I, but this. for a different reason, I Poor think. Michael, you, can't even, <laughs> you can't even get a share of Paris Campbell in a mock draft. In a mock draft. Like, this is a joke. Like, I have been trying to trade for Paris Campbell all over the place. I can't even get him in a freaking mock draft. This is ridiculous. <sighs> all right. Uh, not going on tilt. I'm calm. I'm zen. <laughs> now, I've got to finish out. I can't say that word here. I've got to finish out this draft since I'm at the turn and I've got a minute to do it. Uh, my team structure looks like Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. I'm young at running back with Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs, so I like that. Mm. I'm a little bit older at Julio Jones and T.Y. Hilton, uh, so I probably honestly would not have picked Paris Campbell just to double up on my Indianapolis wide receivers. The problem is there's not a whole lot of uh, wide receivers really that I'm in love with, but as I do have two older wide receivers, I think it's smart as I look through – um, like the Michael Gallups, the Kiki Cooties, the Samuels, the Marvin Jones. I'm settling on DK Metcalf um, just at this ADP, and hopefully he'll have a um, a nice season. And even if he doesn't, I've got him for years to come. So I'm going to go with DK Metcalf at this point. I like his opportunity. Um, I I kind of like to be balanced. I think it makes I think it makes sense really in this position um, to go with a wide receiver here, or I said I went DK Metcalf to go with a running back though. Uh, in a dynasty league, I'm, I have Mark Ingram on one team. I don't love it. I think that he's got one great year left in him and then he might move on. So I have to kind of decide between Chris Carson because I, I, again, I'm not stuck at uh, running back. I just, that's who I kind of like to draft. So I've got choices of James White, Lamar Miller, or Daryl Henderson, possibly. And I like the possibility of Daryl Henderson if Gurley is having some issues. His ADP has shot up uh, since rookie drafts were taking place in uh, April and May. Um, I think, you know, getting a chance to see him at camp is going to hopefully – a little bit more hype, so I'm going to go ahead and take Daryl Henderson as the future back of the L.A. Rams. Daryl Henderson, off the board. Um, Go ahead and uh, get to your team and finish her up, J.J. All right, so after Daryl Henderson went off the board, we saw Eric Ebron, Cam Newton, Kyler Murray, 
and Mark Ingram all come off the board. So I'm in a position where I need to take a running back. I'm not a really big fan of what I see, but when you sometimes go with a, a zero running back, this is where you have to start choosing who you're going to pick, you know, who has the best upside. So we have Chris Carson, Royce Freeman, who we talked about in the news segment, James White, and Lamar Miller. I'm going to go with the guy with the biggest PPR upside. Uh, this is much higher than he went last year. So I don't know if he's going to be as much of a value, but I am taking James White onto my team. It's a solid pick. You can't really go wrong there. That's the one safe fantasy option in New England's backfield. And now it's jinxed. And now it's jinxed. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> so uh, after James White went off the board, we saw Chris Carson and Royce Freeman. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take TJ Hawkinson. I need a tight end, and I have TJ Hawkinson as a top eight dynasty tight end. Uh, I, I don't love... His, I don't love him as like a redraft player this season, but I like him a lot long term. Uh, and if this draft were to keep on going, I would look to add Mark Andrews or Vance McDonald as my other tight end because I think that both of those guys are going to finish in the top 10 in 2019. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in TJ Hawkinson at pick 8.9. And uh, that's going to finish it out. Um, Ryan, why don't you go ahead and just kind of recap your team. JJ, do the same, and I'll follow suit. All right. I have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. Uh, running back one, Alvin Kamara. Running back two, David Montgomery. Wide receiver one, Keenan Allen. Wide receiver two, Calvin Ridley. And uh, Kenyon Drake, Dante Pettis are my flexes, and TJ Hawkinson is the tight end. All right, that is a solid pair uh, trio of running backs. I'm a little bit jealous, Ryan. Uh, I really like your running backs that you selected. Looking at my team, I have Andrew Luck as my QB. I have James Conner and James White as my running backs. I have Devontae Adams, Sammy Watkins, Christian Kirk, and Paris Campbell as my wide receivers. And then finishing off my team, I have tight end Zach Ertz. All right, I'll uh, recap my team. Then I've got a couple questions for you guys, maybe a couple minutes, and then we'll sign off uh, for the night. Uh, I have Aaron Rodgers as my quarterback. My two running backs are Nick Chubb and Josh Jacobs. My two wide receivers are Julio Jones and T.Y. Hilton. Um, I also have... Uh, O.J. Howard is my tight end, and then my two flex players are fairly young in D.K. Metcalf and Daryl Henderson. Now, J.J., obviously this is just kind of an exercise, and we're here to have fun, but what kind of strategy did you employ, and did you follow through with it? I was planning on employing uh, a late-round QB and a late-round tight end, uh, zero running back strategy, and of course I didn't follow it because... I get drunk with power whenever I'm on a podcast and I went a little crazy. So I'm not really happy with my wide receivers overall. I think my running backs will be fine. I think my tight end and QB are fine. And I think my wide receivers do have a solid shot. But I definitely didn't follow my pre-draft strategy. What about you, Ryan? I didn't either. I really like what I'm looking at. I think this is a playoff contender, on paper at least what I was able to put together. Uh, I think that uh, Ridley and Pettis take big jumps in year two. And uh, uh, Kamara, Allen, they're both great. Um, you know, yeah, I think that uh, – I think I might have won this co little competition here. Yeah, your team definitely has a chance of competing on paper. Um, I mean, not in a fantasy football league, but definitely on paper. Ryan, tell me, is there one player in your team that maybe that you were surprised that you did take at that time, that whether you have shares of them already or uh, you don't? 
Uh, it's going to have to be David Montgomery. I don't know. He's kind of in a three-way timeshare right now. I'm sure that situation is going to clear itself up a little bit better as the season goes on. But right now, I don't love the situation he's in. I like him long-term. I think he's a better version of Jordan Howard. Yeah, I'm a little surprised I took him in the fifth round. Same question to you, JJ. Yeah, I'm surprised at almost every player. Uh, James Conner is not somebody I have on any of my teams because I do not like James Conner. So I was very surprised that I went with a running back in the second round. I should definitely have waited. I was I, I was a little surprised about T, at uh, T. Y. Hilton for me, especially after coming with Julio Jones. Uh, again, in that Indianapolis offense, I think he's the most dependable. And I think that I've got a team that could probably win a league with a good, you know, with a good uh, bench, possibly in the next year or two. Um, I might struggle and I might have to, like I said, look at this draft as a mock that if we were going to 16 rounds or if we were going to 30 rounds to really bolster some of the the wide receiver position going forward, um, I, I would have a lot of work to do. But um, again, when you mentioned the dynasty strategy of look three years out, that's kind of how I've always played, just trying to win now. I've always tried to win now and gather assets, but have a great starting lineup. And I, I think I accomplished that. So, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Again, you can find us on Twitter at Rider Dynasty. We're going to put this tweet up after the podcast publishes so that you can vote and tell us who won this mock draft. I am Michael Kloss. You'll hear from Ryan Bickerstaff and J.J. Winter saying goodbye. Ryan, you can send us out first. J.J., give us your best you-know-what, and I will say good night. Hey, we'll catch you on the next one. Boat drinks. There it is. Good night. Thank you for listening to the Ride or Dynasty podcast. If you have enjoyed the pod, please subscribe and leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Follow the guys on Twitter at Ride or Dynasty. You can follow JJ at JJ Wenner. Ryan is at Mix Picks FFB. And Michael is at Michael S. Kloss. Check out our website, RideOrDynasty.com. And remember, we have your back. Your reputation far exceeds your skills, baby.